Welcome to my channel. In this video, I am going to explain a Korean movie, titled, Wonderful Nightmare, released in the year 2015. As the movie begins, a girl named Woo is seen narrating her tragic childhood. She reveals her father died when she was an infant. This shattered her mother, who could couldn't bear the loss of her husband, also died, leaving Woo alone. Then, Woo pledged to herself, never to depend on anyone, and become a successful person. Then, the movie flash forwards to present, where Wu has managed to deliver on her promise. She is now a successful lawyer, earning six figures income. She can confidently take any case, no matter how critical it is. One fine day, day she is approached by the chairman of a wealthy company, the HK Group. And it turns out that the man's son assaulted a girl, and now he wants Wu to defend him in the court. Despite knowing that the boy is guilty, Wu takes the case as she has promised a big amount of fee. As the trial starts, she threatens the victim's family that she will defame their daughter if they don't back up. Terrified poor parents eventually drop the case after realizing that they don't even have the finances to continue the case. Her work impresses the chairman so much that he assigns Wu another task, her to clear the slums from a nearby area, where he wants to build commercial apartments. Before she can reply, he offers her a luxurious BMW and a VVIP platinum card. Thus, Wu could not resist, and instantly accepts the task. Afterwards, Wu arrives at her lavish apartment, where she lives alone. And we get to see that she's made a big fortune out of her work. Then, she takes her new car and heads to the house where she's preserved her parents' memories. On her way back at night, while she is driving at a high speed, suddenly a cat appears on the road. She swerves her car dangerously, and hitting the roadside railings, crashes it. In the next scene, on waking up, she finds herself at a stopover to heaven. Confused she immediately heads to the receptionist and shows her birth card. On checking the records, receptionist finds they have made a mistake. And it turns out that Wu was actually scheduled to die in 2054. She reports the blunder to their director, Mr. Kim, who after reprimanding his staff on the blunder, apologizes to Wu. And then offers her the life of a housewife named Kong, till he rectifies the record in a month. Kong is also a victim of their mistake, who died a month earlier. At first, Wu disagrees to live as a housewife, but when the director explains that it is the only way for her to return to Earth, she reluctantly agrees. Consequently, Wu wakes up in an unfamiliar apartment, which seems to be of a middle-class family. She quickly gets up and looks into the mirror, and starts screaming at her appearance. Hearing this, her husband Mr. Sung comes to her, but she starts screaming even louder. A while later, Wu, while skimming through some pictures of her wedding with Mr. Sung, she realizes that she's there too in place of Kong. And adding to dismay, she also gets to know that the couple have two kids, a teenage daughter Noel and a little son Ru. Just then the little boy approaches her requesting she take him to the bus station for school. Wu obliges, though hesitantly, and takes her son to the bus station. After the boy gets on the bus, she walks to return home. But just then Kang's friends approach her, and forcefully take her to a part-time job. But Wu has no idea on how to work. And here it's revealed that Wu's current family is facing financial problems. Later, the ladies head to a restaurant. While conversing there, they remind Wu about how she got married to Mr. Sung at an early age. Shocked Wu starts feeling uneasy, and heads to bathroom. There she encounters Mr. Kim, who warns her not to change Kang's life, instead he advises her to adjust in Kang's shoes as quickly as possible. But later on, fed up with everything around her, Wu decides to live her life in a lavish way. She heads to a supermarket, collects some expensive food items, but when she proceeds to pay, the card hits its limit. At night Mr. Sung tries to make love with Wu, but she becomes enraged and starts accusing him of marrying an underaged girl, and forcing her to have children. She starts talking like a lawyer, leaving Mr. Sung stunned. After the outburst, she heads to the living room to sleep there alone. The next day, Daewoo goes to her old apartment and retrieves the VVIP card that was gifted to her by Chairman HK Group. She then heads to a fancy clothing store and buys expensive clothes for herself. While making payment Kang's name appears on the card instead of hers. Moreover, her signatures don't match, which makes the cashier doubting as if she is an imposter. Anyhow, she lets her go. At home, when Mr. Sung returns from work, he approaches Wu and confesses his mistake of marrying an underage girl but then angrily reveals that it was Wu who forced him to do so not him. Afterwards, as enters the bedroom, gets shocked to see the expensive clothes brought by Wu. Furious Mr. Sung confronts her, and just then some police officers arrive and take her away. At police station, the police accuse Wu of stealing VVIP card. But surprisingly, her husband stands up to defend her. 
He refers various sections of the law like an experienced lawyer. And it turns out that Mr. Sung went to the same school as Wu, but due to financial constraints, he had to drop out in the middle. Mr. Sung then suggests that he suspects his good friend Kong might have slipped her card into his bag after finding out about his financial condition. But the police are still unconvinced by his theory. However, since they have no solid evidence, they're forced to let them go. While outside, Mr. Sung asks his wife if she's having an affair, but Wu denies. And surprisingly Mr. Sung believes her and rubs her head before leaving. This leaves Wu surprised, as no one had ever rubbed her head affectionately like this. Just then Mr. Kim appears and reprimands her for nearly ruining a perfectly happy marriage within two days. He warns her to maintain good relations with her family or else he will be forced to take her back. In the next scene, Mr. Sung requests Wu to join him at the district office party. At first, she is hesitant but recalling Mr. Kim's words she agrees straight away. She dresses elegantly for the party, like she used to in her previous life, leaving her husband Mr. Sung amazed. In the party, he introduces her to the chief district officer and the trio engage in small talk. Mr. Sung, perceiving an opportunity, starts pitching his plan of building a barrier around the subway. But his boss Mr. Choi interrupts and opposes his plan. Instead, he suggests to renovate the footpath, which would also save money. Later at dinner Wu, in support of husband's plan, tries to convince the district officer to approve the barrier, as the common people need it urgently, whereas renovating the footpath would be redundant as it's already in an excellent condition. Mr. Choi gets enraged on this, thus, after dinner, he meets the couple and makes fun of Mr. Sung for bringing his wife to defend himself, but Mr. Sung ignores him. However, when Mr. Choi calls his wife a bitch, he loses temper and punches him in his face intensely. Afterwards, the couple heads to a bar to cool their minds. Mr. Sung, after having won too many drinks, tells Wu emotionally that he can tolerate just anything but not his wife being insulted. He also says he'll do whatever it takes to keep his family happy, regardless of their financial standing. This leaves Wu impressed, and her opinion of Mr. Sung starts changing. When the couple returns home late night, Wu sleeps with Wu, hugging her tightly. Surprisingly, Wu also cannot resist, hugs him back. In the morning, Noel asks her mother for some pocket money, saying she needs for school. Wu agrees, but puts a condition, asking her to fold those shopping bags, if you really need money. Hearing this, enraged, Noel storms out of the room. However, the next day, she comes back with all the bags folded. This convinces Wu, thus, she gives her daughter a good amount of pocket money. In the next scene, Noel meets her boyfriend Kyung at his house. Kyung's parents are not home. He starts getting close to Noel, but she backs off. Just then, she notices a phone camera and also Kyung's friend recording her. Frightened, try to run away, but pulling her hair, Kyung overpowers her. Meanwhile, a whole gang of his friends also appear there. In the next scene, a traumatized Noel returns home early, directly goes to her room and slams the door. Wu is surprised on her daughter's unusual behavior, prompting her to check. As she enters, gets shocked to see bruises on Noel's face. Concerned mother pleads with her about what happened. Noel finally tells her everything, leaving Wu horrified. However, she consoles her daughter and assures the girl of her support. Next day, Wu takes Noel to the principal's office, where the perpetrator Kyung and his lawyer are also present. Wu, being a lawyer in her previous life, explains the punishments that Kyung will face. But surprisingly, Kyung's lawyer doesn't even defend Kyung. Instead, he simply offers Wu to settle for compensation and close the matter. On hearing these words, she abruptly rushes to bathroom and start crying there. Recalling all such unethical cases, she defended being lawyer. And it is also revealed here that Kyung was the same boy whose case we took over in start of the movie and forced the victim's family to back off. In the meantime, Noel comes looking for her and suggests they dismiss the case as they don't even have the money to pursue it. However, Wu remains adamant on winning the case. She grabs her daughter's hand and heads back to the principal's room. Kyung's devious lawyer again tries to manipulate her, saying that Kyung will not be affected by the incident as he is going abroad shortly. Hearing this, Wu takes out her mobile phone and reveals she has recorded all the conversation, and then assures them that she will take the case to court and destroy both image and career of Kung. Hearing this, enraged Kyung starts scolding Wu, but as he approaches her, Wu thrashes him to the ground forcing him to apologize. Noel is shocked and proud at the same time seeing her mother fighting for her daringly. In the next scene, Wu starts doing all the household chores, and also enjoying good time with the kids. 
Then, one day Mr. Kim suddenly appears in front of her and tells her that she's going to die in a week. Wu begs him to not kids of their mother. But Kim says, he has no power to stop it. Afterwards, while returning home with his mother from school, Wu suddenly falls unconscious. They immediately rush him to hospital, where a doctor reveals after some tests that Wu is suffering from a hereditary disease, causing him eyesight problem. Hearing this, Wu recalls her mother having the same problem and thinks Wu inherited it from her. Next day, as the distraught couple is waiting for their son's operation result, suddenly Mr. Kim appears and takes Wu outside. He informs her that her life is over and she is going to die in a car accident shortly, and asks Wu to sit inside the car, but Wu requests to be allowed to bid her family a final goodbye. Initially, Mr. Kim refuses her request, but on Wu's constant begging, he agrees. Wu swiftly runs inside the hospital, hugs Mo affectionately and advises her to fulfill her dreams. Then she goes to Wu's room, with tears in her eyes, she tells him that she is going far for some time. On which the little boy also becomes emotional and asks his mother to come back soon. But Wu does not reply to this, and simply walks out of the room. Afterwards, she finally meets Mr. Sung and asks him to take good care of the kids. Then she walks out of the building and fades away. In the next scene Wu is seen waking up from her long coma and rushing towards to the hospital where Wu was admitted. But she does not find there. Then she rushes to their apartment, and then to school bus, but to no avail. Then, the movie fast forwards by a month. Wu decides to shift from her apartment and starts packing. During on it, she comes across an old photo book. While going through it, she comes across a folded picture of herself with her mother. As she unfolds the picture, she finds her father too. It makes her speechless, as it's the first time she has seen her father. And what's more surprising, is the fact that her father looks exactly like Mr. Kim. On this revelation, Wu decides to visit New Zealand, the country where her father passed away. In the next scene, while searching for her seat in the plane, Wu notices Mr. Sung, Noel and Wu also going in the same plane. She becomes emotional, but then decides to not reveal her previous life. Instead, she asks the little boy why they're going to New Zealand. To which the kid replies that his mother passed away a month back. Therefore, to clear their minds, they're going on holidays. In response, Wu says that she's going there to meet her father. And the movie ends. That's all from the movie. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and share with friends. Also hit the subscribe button for more interesting content. See you next time with a new movie. Take care.